Hi friend, and welcome to the Message Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Graham, a wedding photographer and lifestyle blogger who just launched my own magazine, Your Message Mag. I'm determined to help women just like you lean into the messes of their lives and find the message they have to share. Here we believe that secrecy helps no one, but transparency and vulnerability have the potential to help many. Get ready for some encouragement to be inspired and to be given all the tools you need to share the unique message you have to share with those who need to hear it most. This is the Message Podcast. Do you know what your love language is? My love language is definitely gift giving. I love giving gifts. And my favorite way to give gifts is purchasing gifts through Artifact Uprising, an online printing company where you can create customized gifts for those that you love. Throughout the whole year being a new mom, I've had parents and in-laws asking for their gifts to be photos of Beckley. And Artifact Uprising makes that super simple. Plus, for my dad on Father's Day, since it was his first Father's Day as a grandpa, I created a personalized board book full of pictures of him and Beckley straight off of my phone. Nothing fancy, guys. And Artifact Uprising makes it super simple to upload those photos, add them to a book template, and then print it, order it, and so it's ready to go to give to the ones that you love. I have a lot of friends ask me where I recommend getting photo books or printing, and if you're looking to do it yourself, the DIY method, then Artifact Uprising and its always the place that I recommend. This is even the place where I go to purchase gifts that I get for my couples. Go to katielaurengram.com slash artifact uprising for $20 off your first order. Again, that is katielaurengram.com slash artifact uprising for $20 off your first order. You can also click the link in my show notes. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Message Podcast. Today, we're going to be diving into how to be a world changer starting today. And I want to start us off with a story from just the other week of mine. I was at a Bible study, and there are a lot of moms in this Bible study and a lot of amazing women, and I I really enjoy being a part of this Bible study. But there was a moment where the conversation of modesty came up modesty for young girls and you know most of the moms in that room they had daughters Um, I have a daughter I can think of several women off the top of my head who had daughters in that group and so this was a very um, specific conversation and even those with sons they were concerned about modesty for their sons or for their daughters to be respectful of their sons it was this big conversation and it, it got me to thinking about like you know I believe we are all called to do what we can to help change this world for the better. And so when we're talking about being a world changer, because friend, I I truly believe that you are called to be a world changer just as I am, just as everybody is. We are all called for this. And so in this podcast episode, I want to dive into three traits of world changers and what that looks like, how they live out these traits. And then we can go, we can look inwardly at ourselves and see, okay, am I striving to live out these traits as well? Am I showing these traits? Am I emulating them or am I not? Do I need to grow? So the first trait that I want to talk about is world changers aren't victims, they're warriors. So think about that. A world changer, they're not a victim, they're a warrior, they're out there, they're doing things. So are you someone who is living in a victim mindset? Here's a quick example of someone who might be living in a victim mindset versus a warrior mindset. And this example is going with the story of my Bible study, just to break it down really simple for you. So you desire more modest clothing options for your son or daughter. If you're in a victim mindset, you complain constantly about how there aren't enough modest options for your child. If you're living in a warrior mindset, you notice the problem, which is the lack of modest options for your child. And instead of complaining, you buckle down on finding a solution. Perhaps you look into shopping at boutiques versus mainstream stores where there are more modest options, or maybe you learn how to sew so you can alter clothing from those mainstream stores so that it is more modest. Or if you're really thinking big, which is kind of how I tend to go, you look into options to start your own young young person modest clothing line, like a young girl's clothing line or a young boy's modest clothing line. So do you notice the difference here? Victims notice a problem and they complain. They, that's their default. They go straight into complaining, but they don't actually do anything about it. They just sit there and complain. Whereas warriors notice a problem and take action to resolve it. They 
both are noticing a problem. It's not this negligence or this inability to see the problem. No matter whether you're a victim or a warrior, both you're both looking at the problem dead square in the face. But it's a matter of how you react to it. Do you complain about it or do you take action to resolve it? That's the key difference. In order to change the world, you have to actually take action towards that change. You can't just look at a look at a problem and then think of a solution. You also have to actually take action on that. Change never came from sitting on your hands and doing nothing. It came from someone making a move that shook the status quo or challenged people or shifted the mindset of those around them. Ultimately, world changers aren't victims, they're warriors. Have you ever felt like you're called to more in life? Do you desire to encourage others? Have you experienced a mess in life that you wish to share with others to help them grow and feel less alone? I created Your Message Mag for driven, encouraging, and servant-hearted people just like you. Your Message Mag is my new lifestyle magazine focused on bringing encouragement and inspiration into the lives of others through impactful storytelling and seasonal content. Each issue features guest writers with powerful, impactful stories to tell. Get ready to experience the first magazine you'll not only read cover to cover, but will also change your life. Subscribe to Your Message Mag at yourmessagemag.com. Again, go to yourmessagemag.com to get your first copy. The link is also in the show notes. The next trait I want to talk about is world changers prioritize making a difference over their own comfort. And guys, this is this is a challenging one for me. Um, I was speaking very candidly. I have to check myself on this often. So if you're challenging others' way of thought or making a move that goes against the grain or simply being a little different, you're going to ruffle some feathers. It's inevitable. There, there. Everybody is so different on this world. We are, thank the good Lord that we are not all the same person. Um, But that does mean that we have differences in opinion, differences in thought, differences in how we react to things. So when you're going against the grain or being different, you're going to ruffle feathers. It's going to happen. So world changers are people who've chosen to prioritize making a change over their own comfort. They recognize that their comfort is going to be compromised or maybe just not going to happen. And they've chosen to prioritize making a change over that. It's a difficult thing to do. And it's something that a lot of people aren't willing to do. And it's something that I have to check myself on all the time. Um, Changing the world, it may be embarrassing or it might put you in a compromising position. But if you really want to go about exacting change in the world, you need to get comfortable with this or at the very least put up with it. Um, Obviously, you hope that as you go about changing the world, maybe things will get easier, but that's never guaranteed. I want to give you a few examples of um, people or types of people who have done this. So think of Martin Luther King Jr., He had a dream that is now famous and still revolutionizing our world today. It is still relevant today. But when he was out sharing that dream and working so hard to make a change happen, he faced opposition to the point of it taking his life. Like That is serious, guys. But he prioritized making a change in the world and fighting the battle he felt called to over being comfortable. I'm also currently recording this episode on Veterans Day, and veterans are a great example of world changers. They sacrifice their comfort every day so that they can help change the world. Then there are politicians. Most politicians go into their line of work because they want to make a change, or at least you hope that they are going into that line of work because they want to make a change. They want to be world changers, but we all know that when you step into the spotlight, you're going to have opposition. You will be challenged and it could be ugly. I mean, just watch any of the recent presidential debates. It gets ugly, but they are people who are wanting to make a change in the world and they've chosen to prioritize making a change over their comfort. Or perhaps you're a mom who's sharing a new method of sleep training that's different from the typical methods out there. You're looking to change the world of other mothers out there, but you can most likely expect criticism from mothers or random folk with opinion while you're on your way. You're going against the grain. You're sharing something different, something revolutionary. It's going to happen. You just need to expect it. When you're looking to change the world, it's it's not a matter of if opposition will happen, but rather when it will happen. 
And world changers, they choose to prioritize their mission for change over their own comfort, pride, or sometimes even their own lives. Now, the third trait that I want to talk about when it comes to world changers is world changers see the world for what it could be and make plans to move towards that. So to be a world changer, you have to be able to look beyond how the world is now and imagine how it could be. But you can't stop there. You also have to think of a solution or work with others to come up with a solution. It may not work the first time, but true world changers, they don't give up. They keep trying and trying and trying again because they have such a clear vision in their minds of how the world could be if they succeeded. If there's a particular issue in the world that weighs heavily on your heart, I would challenge you to start thinking of ways that you could make a change. Um, Here are a few examples that I've brainstormed. It could be you giving a donation to a charity or organization that helps fight that particular issue, Uh, or perhaps you start posting about the issue more regularly on your social media to raise awareness. You could go a step further and share those organizations regularly in case others would like to support them. If you sell products or run a business, you could do a campaign where you portion, where where a portion, (laughs) I'm getting all tongue tied here. You could run a campaign where a portion of your profits are given as a donation to fight that cause. Plus, people love knowing that their money is going towards something, um, something beyond themselves, something to help the world or to help a certain cause. So personally, I think this is a great idea. Um, If you have a blog or a YouTube channel or a podcast or have a large Instagram account following, you could run regular unpaid ads for organizations that support the cause you're passionate about. Out, um, just on your stories or even in your feed. Just share about it and tag them. Don't expect anything in return. Just openly share about these places. You could volunteer. Organizations are always looking for volunteers. Like Just message them and see if they have events coming up or any way that you could volunteer to help them. Uh, Make a YouTube channel where you regularly talk about this issue and have videos presenting solutions, sharing common misconceptions, ways people could help, the root causes of the issue, etc, etc, etc. This could be a huge way to raise awareness and help shift the mindsets of others. Also, with a platform like a YouTube channel, you automatically have a perception of authority with others, which means that you can promote charities or organizations and you might see a higher interaction rate than that way than via a personal Instagram account. And I would say that this goes the same for like starting a podcast. You could start a podcast purely devoted to raising awareness for a certain issue and presenting solutions for that issue. If you have organizations that help fight this cause, you could bring in members of that organization for interviews or for guest um, episodes. So the ideas are endless. I would simply encourage you to pick one way that you can take action this week and act on it. If you have a particular issue that in this world is weighing heavily on your heart, brainstorm ways that you can take action to help improve this problem and pick one and act on it. So friend, if you've been listening to this episode and you feel convicted that you've been living in a victim mentality, I want to let you know it's okay. I've been there too, and you can bet your bottom dollar that I will be there again from time to time. It's all right. You're not alone. But the great thing about life is that we can choose to make a change and live differently. You can choose to make a switch from a victim mentality to a warrior mentality because friend, truly, you are not called to be a victim. You are called to be a warrior. You're called to be a world changer. So start taking action and start changing the world today. When I first started my wedding photography business, I was overwhelmed with contracts, collecting payments, depositing checks, organizing emails, and all the other admin tasks that my creative brain struggled with. Two years ago, I made the jump and implemented HoneyBook into my business, and I've never looked back since. HoneyBook allows you to create email templates for quick inquiry responses, send customized invoices and contracts, collect payments online, schedule events, and so much more, and keeps it all organized in one neat, easy-to-use interface. HoneyBook is one of those programs I use every day in my business, and I now couldn't imagine doing business without it. If you run a service-based business where you're working with clients, I couldn't recommend HoneyBook enough. For 20% off your first year using HoneyBook, go to katielaurengram.com slash HoneyBook. 
Again, that's katielaurengram.com slash honeybook for 20% off your first year. I'll also have the link in the show notes. Thanks for listening to the Your Message Podcast. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, make sure you're subscribed to this podcast and leave a review if you haven't already. This really helps with encouraging the podcast apps to share this with other people to maximize our impact so we can help as many people as possible. Also, if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to screenshot this episode and share it on Instagram. Make sure to tag me at Katie Lauren Graham so I can share in the excitement with you. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you in the next episode.